Hello lovely people, my birthday is on the horizon which means it is time for our annual birthday natter. So it's not my actual birthday when I'm posting this, my birthday is on the 24th, but if you have been here for more than a year you will know that it is tradition that every year on my birthday I just film a very casual, very chill, just a little check-in. Usually I set myself goals, previously they've been more like life goals, but they are veering into more reading goals, which I find quite helpful because I set myself goals at the start of the year, but it's quite useful to do a little mid-year check-in on my birthday. I need to apologise if things are noisier than usual. We are in the middle of a heat wave right now, so I have left my windows open, but it means you might be able to hear like seagulls and boats and stuff like that. I hope it's not too distracting. If I shut the windows, I would melt. Um, as is tradition, I have a beverage, this time <laughs> giant squash, because again, heat wave. But that's all of my pre-waffle faff. Shall we dive in? The usual course of events is Sorry, I'm just making sure I don't knock my squash all over my books. <laughs> the usual course of events is that I look back on last year's goals and I sort of let you know how I got on with them and then I set myself a few new goals for the next year ahead and just like vaguely reflect on what this last year has been like. Um, the life goals I'm going to skim over very quickly. So I wanted to have moved and to this I just wrote in my notes, lol, because that's not happened. But it is underway at the moment. We're working on moving. Um, hopefully soon I will be recording in a new location and all will be joyful. I also set myself driving lessons, to which I also, when I was making notes while re-watching that video, wrote, Are you kidding me? Last year Sophie had no idea of what the extent of this pandemic would be. She was living in a bubble. She didn't know. We'll forgive her. But obviously, not happening. The other one I did actually achieve. I wrote like, yoga, weights, screen breaks, just like looking after myself. Um, I've fallen off the bandwagon of yoga. Literally as soon as it became winter, I was like, I'm not getting up early to do yoga anymore. Go away. I've kind of swapped that for like other forms of movement. I have been continuing doing my weights. I am the proud owner of two biceps. Um, and now my mission for the next year is to extend that to the other muscles in my arm. I can't just have like two muscles really strong and all the rest of them are like, you never use me. So that's on the horizon. So those are all like the life goals. I'm not going to set myself any life goals for this year because I think as we can tell, like everything's a bit unknowable, everything's a bit chaos right now and I'm just not going to, I don't find that helpful. However, reading goals, I did also achieve I think. So um, my main goal last year was I wanted to do more purposeful book buying and this took the form of like thinking about where I'm getting my books from, who I'm prioritising buying. So examples that I wrote down was like, I wanted to be supporting indie bookshops. Fully achieved. I primarily buy from independent bookshops unless I'm trying to get something that just I can't find. I try and spread my buying around so that I can support all of the lovely ones that I like, but like I go to certain bookshops for certain types of things and that's just a really nice thing to have. Um, if anyone would like a video on independent bookshops that I love, I'd be happy to do that. I don't know if it's of interest, but they do ship all over the place, so I would do that if that is of interest. Um, also, like, support independent creators. I have been doing favourites videos for the last year, and I think, I hope that it's clear from those that I have been doing that. You know, a lot of the stuff that I shout out in my favourites videos are things that are made by independent creators, you know, the jewellery, the accessories, the little trinkets and candles and stuff like this. Like pretty much all of that is coming from independent creators and I'm really pleased with that and that's definitely something I'm going to continue and if you have any independent creators that you love please do recommend them to me because I'm always on the lookout for more and I love supporting them. Um, and then I also, talk, I also put down about like supporting Own Voices books and I mean over this last year there have been a lot of conversations about that Own Voices label although it is intended to support minority authors sometimes it can be used and weaponized against them so I have been listening to these conversations I think I think the sentiment at the heart of what I was trying to go for was just like make sure that like whatever it is I want to be reading about or learning about like if I want to make sure that I'm reading more trans books make sure I'm reading more trans authors you know that kind of vibe which I think I have done it is something that I will continue to do my best to do whilst maybe not necessarily um, pinning it all on this own voices label and more going for 
find authors that I love, that I want to support, and that kind of thing. Um, I also set myself a couple of specific reading areas, so I thought I would go through the, let you know how many of those books I read, and then just sort of like mention a highlight reel of some of my favourites from those genres. So the first category I set myself was middle grade, I was definitely having a big middle grade moment last birthday. Um, I read 22 middle grade books over the last year. Um, that number is heavily bolstered by the fact that I reread the Narnia books, realised I don't like the Narnia books. <laughs> but that will be coming up in some book chats soon. Three highlights of that middle grade reading that I thought I would mention is Howl's Moving Castle by Dan Owen Jones. This is my first Dan Owen Jones book I've ever read. I loved it. Very different from the Studio Ghibli film, but I really enjoyed that. When Life Gives You Mangoes by Corinne Gettin. This is one that I read because I saw that Olivia Savannah at Olivia's Catastrophe really enjoyed it, so I checked it out on Libby and I really enjoyed it. I felt like it was one that developed really well and there were things at the start of it that I wasn't sure about. I felt they were a bit strange, but then it turned out that that was entirely deliberate. Um, I just thought it was a book that unfolded really well and I'll be really interested to read anything else that the author publishes. And then also Where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Grace Lynn. And this was one of the uh, books in my favourite fiction books of the year video. I just thought it was absolutely adorable and precious and one of those books that is um, when you read it, it feels like it's written in a very simplistic language, but that's very deliberate. There's been a lot of craft that has gone into making this thing seem simple when actually it's doing so much. Um, I loved all of those three. I also set myself to read more translated books, and I read 17 translated books over the last year, but I have also bought more than that, and I have unread ones to explore. I mentioned in last year's birthday video that I think that there is this really interesting discussion when it comes to translating things and just how hard a process that is. One I'm thinking of off the top of my head is, and I think I've talked about this one quite a lot recently, I think my book chat on it went live quite recently, but um, As I Crossed a Bridge of Dreams by Lady Sarashina, which is like a Japanese classic, and that was particularly interesting because there was poetry in that, and the translator in the introduction was talking about how hard it was to translate these poems because um, in their original form, all of the word choices have many meanings, so you can read many meanings into one very short poem. And like, how do you translate that? I don't know. It's fascinating. So um, I read 17 translated books last year. I will be reading more this year. But some of my favourites were Root of Ice and Salt by Jose Luis Arat, which I have talked about to death on this channel because I loved it, which is like a, a queer, gothic, Dracula retelling that's like reimagining the journey of Dracula's coffin as he journeys to Whitby, but it is from the perspective of the captain of the ship, and it is like suffused with like um, queer longing and like this haunting dread as people start to disappear. I just thought it was amazing. It was on my radar because it is published by Sylvia Moreno Garcia's um, independent press, and she was talking about it a lot on her Twitter, and I'm so glad that I was like pre-ordered it and got it because I loved it. Uh, Kim Ji Young, born 1982 by Cho Nam Ju, which is kind of like an every woman tale. So it is um, following this South Korean woman called Kim Ji Young, but that is one of the most popular names uh, in Korea. And it's again, it's written in this very like straightforward matter of fact way, but it is, it's almost like using this one woman to shine a light on all of the issues that face women in Korean society. And it's like this tale that is specific to this character that you're following, but it is done in a way that you get to see all of these different issues that are so prevalent and very much like she is a woman who could be an every woman figure and that's why the people in the story are like referred to as like the father the mother they don't really have names and i just thought it was very short but i thought it had a lot of impact to it and i completely understand why it caused so much discussion and that kind of thing and then also one that i read very recently was i saw ramallah by morid baguti who is a palestinian poet this was his account of returning to palestine and sort of it's, it's very much like a reflection upon like his status as a displaced person and how that affects him when he is not able to be in Palestine, but then also this moment of homecoming, he still feels displaced, he's still different from the people who, who have always been there, and just the... he did such a good job of really capturing a moment and feelings and what it felt like to be there for him in a way that is very poetic and again this idea of translating um i think the if i remember correctly the translator um is an artist and so it's an artist translating the words of a poet and that mean, meant that there was still this poeticism to it i don't know it was very beautifully written 
Um, I really enjoyed it. The final sort of like genre that I set myself that I wanted to read more of was non-fiction and I definitely think I've achieved this one because I read 65 non-fiction books over the last year. Um, one thing that I've been doing with non-fiction specifically is I think I've really been able to identify the areas of non-fiction that I like and I want to pursue further. Like highlights, I've been reading a lot of like nature writing, food writing, memoirs, but also I think I have been exploring a lot of non-fiction about people and places all around the world and just sort of, I find it really helpful is what I'm saying, to um, get a better understanding of different countries that I don't really know anything about, but do it through reading personal autobiographies and memoirs because it gives you sort of like a place to root yourself in, then just discover like periods of history and stuff like this that I don't really know anything about. Some non-fiction highlights, I read both of Robin Wall Kimmerer's books this year and she is a new favourite auto by author. The way that she approaches nature writing and just interacting with the world and stuff like this, I just think amazing, she writes beautifully, I love her. I finished reading Maya Angelou's autobiographical series and I'm a little bit lost without it but I did really enjoy it and this is the opportunity now I think to explore her poetry. Speaking of people whose poetry I need to explore, I also read Zami by Audre Lorde which is her autobiography which was amazing, again I loved it. Midnight Chicken by Ellen Risbridger has been a food writing that I just won't shut up about. Two Trees Make a Forest by Jessica J. Lee was a piece of nature writing that was all about Taiwan that was super duper interesting. Ways of My Grandmothers by Beverly Hungry Wolf was a really fascinating look. It had a generation of Native American women whose perspectives have not always been recorded and that was super interesting. Sea People by Christina Thompson was all about um, Pacific Islands and that was super fascinating. Um, trans Love was a really fantastic um, collection of writings by trans and non-binary authors. Um, Being Human by Judith Human is uh, an autobiography of disability rights activist, which was fantastic. Happy Fat by Sophie Hagen was looking at uh, dismantling fat phobia and that kind of thing, also fantastic. All of these and more have been truly delightful and I have loved every moment of them. So I definitely think it's been a really good reading year. These goals that I set myself, I'm proud that I have stuck to and they have definitely like illuminated my life somewhat. I have three goals that I'm going to set myself for this next year going forward. The first of these is kind of tied into my translated fiction thing, but I'm trying to open it up a bit more and give myself a bit more of like an aim and a focus on it. So I want to essentially read more globally, but the specific aim I'm going for is that I want to read more books from places that I've never read books from before. So I'm sort of just opening this up to be like, they don't have to be translated fiction specifically, although yes, I will continue to focus on that. Um, they could be written in English originally, but I want to read more books from places that I have never read books from. And slightly linked to that as well is also f not just factoring in like country of origin, but also like linguistic origin in some ways. I read a book recently that was about stateless nations in Europe that was kind of looking at like minority groups within Europe and just sort of like histories, language, that kind of stuff to do with them. So one that ties into that kind of is that last year for my birthday I got given Death in Spring by Merce Rodereda and I was interested in reading that because it's a Catalan book that was written in the language when the language was legal under Franco's regime. Um, I didn't really get on with the book, it wasn't really my jam, but this, this concept of not just being like, oh I'm reading a book from Spain because I haven't read a lot of Spanish books, but also paying attention to like what is the original language, what are the, is it like from any like minority linguistic group, that kind of thing. An example on my to read shelf is I have When the Whales Leave, which is by Yuri Rutku, who is considered to be the sort of father of Chukchi literature. They are a uh, minority group who live in the north of Russia and I've never read any Chukchi literature before. I have a lot on my radar that are books um, from places that I've never read books from before that I want to prioritise buying and reading. Just to continue to expand the types of things I'm reading, the types of voices that I am supporting and listening to and that kind of thing. So I'm really excited to do that. If you have any recommendations again, do let me know. I'm so sorry for all the sirens. The second aim I have is to buy more second books by authors that I like. Something I have realised is that I have a tendency to be a magpie and get distracted. So I will read, like I loved The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin, loved that trilogy, but previous Sophie would have just 
never read another thing by N.K. Jemisin again, despite the fact that I would have considered her one of my favourites. It just would have slipped my mind, because I get distracted by, like, new authors that I've never read before. But new and improved Sophie got the Inheritance Trilogy for her Christmas present, and is now going to continue reading from this author that I think is amazing. It's just that. It's like that element of if I read a book and I love a book by an author, make sure I buy more books by them. Don't just get distracted by new authors all the time. So that's a goal. And then my final one is sort of a project that I've kind of been doing this last year, or developed over the last year anyway, is that I'm specifically trying to buy books that are on my Goodreads to read shelf. I use Goodreads, I know there is Storygraph, I haven't transitioned to it yet, so I'm currently using Goodreads because I have a lot of books filed away on my to read shelf, that's what I use to sort of um, express, to essentially make a note of things I want to read, and then periodically I do go through it and I sort of cull anything that I think is no longer of interest, but um, there are a lot of really fantastic books on that list that I want to read, and I've been trying to focus on getting those shelf numbers down as a tangible way of translating the fact that I will be buying books that are already on my radar that I do know I want to read. It's made a lot easier by the fact that I'm not really going to physical bookshops at the moment, so I'm not really getting distracted by like, ooh, shiny things, um, which is a lovely thing to do, and I do miss that. It's just, I'm like, bearing in mind I'm doing a lot more conscious book buying from independent bookstores, kind of trying to make sure that I'm working off of this list that I have curated for myself with the specific aim of it all appealing to me. Um, get that list down a bit, read some of those books, enjoy them. Have a wonderful time. Um, so those are just the three goals I'm setting for the next year. I thought I would leave it at that. Not going to set any life goals. Don't know what's going to happen. Um, usually I also just give like a brief little like, how has my last year been? Check in kind of thing. Um, along with most of the rest of the world, you know, we're still living through a very strange time. It's been a bit of an up and down year. There's been lovely moments. There have been terrible moments. That is kind of life. When I did this last year, um, I'd, I'd had a bit of a run of things. There had been uh, a family friend had passed away, there had been some health stuff with some people who were very important to me. It was all a bit much when I was doing this last year. I'm in a better place than I was then. Time has happened, things have got better, um, and that's really important to recognise and acknowledge and that's really good. Um, the nature of this current life moment we're in means that everything is a bit up and down for most of us. If you're in one of the rubbish times right now, I'm very sorry, it will get brighter soon, even though I know that's not always very helpful to hear. Um, but what I say to myself when I'm in the dark moments is, a uh, quote from Hannah Hart, <laughs> which is, this feeling is not for a forever, it's just for now, which I found very helpful when I was coming out and I was very confused. And it's a phrase that I've held on to throughout the rest of my life because I find it useful. I've been practicing a lot of um, allowing myself to feel my emotions and just like acknowledge and be like, this is the emotion I'm having right now. Just gonna feel it and then we'll move on afterwards. But um, I'm a human, not a robot. I feel how I feel when I feel it. Allow yourself to identify, acknowledge it, and then you can move on to the next thing. Um, and that's been really helpful. I sound much more together right now than I have at other points in this last year. But, you know, to summarise, reading has been good. Life has been up and down, but isn't it always? Um, interested to see what 27 brings. <laughs> Uh, I would love to hear from you, like, again, I always ask these questions, I'm like, do you do anything special for your birthday, do you set yourself goals, do you find these things useful, do you have anything you'd like to talk about, all of this and more. Oh, the final one is, do you have any videos you'd like to see from me? I sometimes have a tendency to take a very long time to deliver on the videos that people tell me they'd like to see. I write them all down. I eventually will get to them. If I, if you've done this previously and I haven't got to it yet, it's still there. It's just I haven't done it yet. Um, I'd just love to hear from you if there's anything you'd like to see on this channel, because, as per always, this is a very casual hobby I have. I'm not really looking to be a mega successful person online. That's scary, and I don't have the time for it. Um, I just like to have this little output, and to just like hear from you guys when you want to leave comments, have a little chat when you want to, you know? Um, but yeah, let me know anything. Hope you're having a lovely day. See you next time for a bookish video.